Captain Ellie Morgan. And uh, Ellie is my nickname, but uh, Eleanor is my full name. E-L-E-A-N-O-R. Last name is Morgan, M-O-R-G-A-N. Out here, I'm in uh, 816 EAS, is my deployed squadron. Back home, I'm the, uh, in the 4th Airlift Squadron, uh, located at McCord Field in Washington. I've been a pilot now for, I guess, uh, a little over two years, two and a half years now, since I finished my pilot training. And I've been at McCord uh, Field for two years now. And this is my first deployment. <laughs> um, it's actually not too bad. Um, the good news is that our deployment cycle here is into the winter, so every day is cooling off, so I have something to look forward to <laughs> as the weeks go by. It's getting cooler, and I have my own room, so I'm happy. Yeah, but it's, it's been good. We're staying busy. Um, I uh, work the scheduling desk when I'm not flying. Um, so I fly for a couple weeks, and then I work scheduling for the squadron. In terms of uh, airframes I've flown, uh, starting in UPT, basically I flew the T-37 in pilot training, and then I flew the T-1, and then after that I just flew the C-17. So, And this is my first assignment out here, so uh, my first big airframe, major airframe I've flown. The C-17 is pretty awesome. Uh, a little about the C-17, it's pretty much, uh, a lot of us refer to it as a kind of the sports car of all the heavies. Uh, it's pretty maneuverable. It can do all kinds of stuff. Uh, we can land on short fields. Uh, we can do assault landings on short fields. We can do SPRO um, ops, which is basically semi-prepared runways. So we can land on dirt. Um, we're able to take off in a short distance as well. So we can get in and out of a lot of places. We're pretty flexible in the C-17, and we can haul a lot of cargo. So. Um, the plane is really maneuverable and can do a lot of stuff, which makes us uh, pretty favorable to a lot of uh, you know random missions that they find when they need stuff brought in there. I think probably one of the most uh, unique things or things that surprised me when I first flew the C-17 was really just how maneuverable it was, and uh, probably just that it didn't feel like flying a huge plane. Uh, when you're sitting at the controls, uh, you have a stick that we use here, and we have a heads-up display, uh, unlike any of the other cargo planes in the Air Force. And uh, it's really great. You really do kind of feel like you're in a small little plane or fighter plane uh, flying when you're doing maneuvers and you know taking off and coming in. So that was probably the biggest thing I was surprised about was that uh, you know it really didn't feel like a huge behemoth of a plane we were flying. Um, and then. Uh, not that I was surprised about it, but uh, I was able to, I was happy to find that I could adjust my seat and rudder pedals enough that I could reach everything, because people give me, uh, people joke around with me about being smaller, so, but I just move everything in place and I can fit, and I don't even have to sit on phone books, so. <laughs> the thing that I like most about the C-17 is just all the places that I get to travel to and see. Um, I love, traveling around the world, going into, you know, austere places or, um, you know, anywhere really. And I love just the capability that our plane has, all the different missions that we can do from aeromedical evacuations, uh, things like that, to um, uh, HR missions, bringing back fallen warriors, um, you know, to delivering soldiers back home from a deployment. There's just so many things that we can do with this plane. It's just kind of brings it all home and just reminds me why I do it and I love it. So. C-17s, what we provide to the warfighters that other planes can't, is really the capability to haul a lot of cargo in and out of a place. And, um, you know, we can also airdrop a bunch of cargo into austere places where, you know, there's only roads and no uh, airstrips. So to help our soldiers on the front lines who need supplies, um, we're able to drop it into them so they can continue the fight, you know, um, far away from lots of civilization most of the time. Um, but yeah, we, we have the ability to just take so much stuff. Um, I was on a mission and we flew into northern Pakistan to help with the flood relief um, for all the victims up there stuck um, in the flooded uh, river valley. And we brought in 18 pallets of, uh, of food for them. And what we were able to do was, uh, with the amount of pallets that we could bring in, pretty much was just one plane, one C-17 coming in was three times the amount of stuff we were able to deliver as opposed to the C-130s going in there. So 
you know, we, we're pretty efficient with bringing stuff in and we can go into these smaller places. So The typical crew that we fly with out here in the theater um, is what we refer to as a combat basic crew. So what it is is two pilots, one loadmaster, and then an additional crew member. So we can either have, uh, the third person can either be a pilot or a loadmaster. Um, and then for most of the places we fly out here, we also carry with us a flying crew chief. So he can help us with maintenance problems when we're on the ground in places that don't have maintenance for us. <laughs> um, and then uh, sometimes every now and then we will fly with the augmented crew when we have uh, longer days. So we'll fly with three pilots and two load masters. But most of the time it's just the four crew members and a flying crew chief most of the time. And, uh, and when we need it um, into some of the field, we also bring a Raven team for security. It's a pretty dynamic environment when we're out here flying the C-17, so in order to keep everyone on the same page out here, you know, we always try to make sure we're keeping everyone in the loop. Anytime something changes, you know, we're letting the loadmasters know anytime there's issues with cargo or anything in the back of the plane, loadmasters are letting us know. Um, the biggest thing is just communication, especially when you have a big crew of people. Um, and also, uh, you know, we just stay up to date with uh, our command and control as well and uh, make sure we're checking in with everyone to get all the information we need. Yeah, I think AR is pretty amazing uh, when you think of how you have two large planes, you know, probably within like 20 feet of each other or so, hooked up, attached. Um, it can be a little nerve wracking, but uh, you know, we do a lot of practice in the simulators and uh, back home when we're not flying missions on local training flights that we do. So everybody gets a bunch of practice with it. So. Um, you know, for the first time person who haven't seen it before, they can be a little nervous. But once you get used to it and you see it, you know, it's pretty normal. We were carrying uh, soldiers and cargo up here to Bagram Air Base in Afghanistan. And uh, today was just a one stop. Uh, it was actually kind of a short day for us. Normally we have two stops downrange. And so we just came up here, dropped them all off, and we'll be taking some more cargo uh, back. We get alerted. And at that point, we 30 minutes later, we catch a bus. So we all meet up, hop on a bus 30 minutes after our alert, and then we go to our squadron at that point, take all of our bags off the bus, and uh, we go inside, and at that point we get all of our paperwork for the flight and the mission that we're gonna be doing. Uh, so we'll get all that printed out for us there. We'll review all of our paperwork, um, and at that time we'll fill out other paperwork in terms of uh, ORM, and uh, we do our meal forms. Uh, we also determine how much we're gonna need for fuel. We'll have that called into the, uh, the fuel guys and maintenance. And um, then from that point, we'll also gather all the, all the items that we'll need. We'll go and get our uh, night vision goggles. We'll go sight that in. We'll um, pick up any um, classified material that we need to bring with us for the flight. Um, and then we'll also, uh, at that point, then go get a tactics briefing, a tactics and intel briefing from the folks in the squadron there. And we'll go into the vault and they'll give us, uh, you know, a rundown of any significant major threats or events that have happened to the airfields that we're flying into. And then at that point, they'll give us the uh, information that we'll need to use flying into these airfields for the day. Um, and then at that point, uh, once we got all of that taken care of and ready to go, we'll uh, head off on a bus and... Uh, well, as you saw today, we'll stop by a grab-and-go. We'll get some food for the flight, the most important part for every pilot, getting enough food for your flight. Um, and you always have to make sure you get enough food for a full day, even if you have a short one, because uh, you always can get recut and have a long day. So uh, we grab our food, and then at that point, we start the process of uh, customs and now processing. So then we'll walk across the street, We'll uh, go up and hand in our flight orders and our military IDs. We'll out-process, do a big bag drag, and, um, and then get to the plane. And then at that point, we'll do our uh, pre-flights and they'll load the cargo, make sure the fuel's on board. And um, hopefully, we don't have any maintenance issues and we can take off on time. Uh, today, not quite the case, but um, that's all right. We made it work. Um, and then at that point, you know, as long as nothing changes, then uh, We'll run through our checklist and do our taxi and takeoff. So kind of a quick rundown of what we go through prior to takeoff. It's quite a bit of stuff. And uh, yeah, and even coming back at the end of the day can, can take a little while too. So uh, yeah, so even though your flight may not be that long, from the point that you actually wake up to the point that you actually take off is uh, 
is about almost four hours. Some of the biggest terrain features coming into Afghanistan, um, obviously, is all the mountainous terrain that we come in here. Um, so we always have to make sure that when we're coming in and we're doing approaches that we're being safe and uh, being aware of the terrain around us. Uh, we have things up on our, uh, in the plane, we have a terrain awareness warning system and uh, that helps us to make sure that we're within a safe area when we're maneuvering coming in. Um, yeah, kind of a lot of just barren, <laughs> barren uh, areas uh, along with mountains, so very, uh, yeah, it can be treacherous at some parts coming into Afghanistan. And the biggest thing to watch out for is, um, is at night when we come in. Um, luckily, we were able to come in during the day today. But when we take off, we'll see. Uh, we may end up having to probably put on our night vision goggles to take off out of here so we can clear really well and make sure we're staying clear of the terrain. So. For me personally, I would say the most rewarding part about doing this job is just knowing that I'm helping other people out. That's the most rewarding for me. I think the uh, most rewarding, uh, two most rewarding flights I've ever done was uh, one of the humanitarian reliefs up into northern Pakistan, bringing food in um, to the Pakistani people who didn't have any. And we actually also airlifted out um, a bunch of the refugees from up there um, back to southern Pakistan. And, and that, was, that was really rewarding, getting to see those people and take them out and let them know they were safe and they were going to be okay. Um, and then the other was uh, the very first aeromedical evacuation mission I ever did um, in Iraq. Just taking the people out of there to Ramstein to get the medical help they needed. That really kind of brought it all home for me. And, and that was when I, I really realized I was doing what I needed to be doing and, you know, for all the right reasons and why I love it.